Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome to another video. Um, today I want to do a video um, on starting some uh, seedlings. In this case it's going to be some uh, spinach. And I started the seeds a few days ago in this little Tupperware bowl on top of some um, coffee filters and maybe a paper towel or two just to keep, keep them wet. And um, the coffee filter I... I well, I figured that it wouldn't they wouldn't stick as well to the coffee filter um and try to root down into it, but I just kept watering them a little bit, and now they're starting to sprout, and you can see the they've started to grow leaves and i've keep I've kept them underneath the grow lot, so they haven't been um they ha they don't they're not lacking any um lighting <clears throat> so today I'm going to pick out a good bunch of them and um, yeah, I'm going to get them ready for uh, my hydrop hydroponic uh, crack key uh, deep water uh, buckets that I have going. So, yeah. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do is I have some water that's been sitting out. Um, I got a little impatient, so I added some water, some warm water to get it up to the temperature. You need to make sure that when you're working with um, hydroponics, you don't you don't shock the roots. Um, with too cold of water um, or too hot of water, I guess. Um, so my thermostat in the house says around 72 degrees, um, actually 73 right now. So I, um, so I made sure the water's around that. I think it measured with my old thermostat here. It's measured for food, but yeah, it, it rated it around 72, 70, 73 degrees. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty. It's pretty all right. Um, I have killed plants by doing that before, though. Um, throwing just throwing a you know a gallon of cold water into my hydroponics, and they just my I had uh, one plant die, and the other two um, kind of wilted down. So uh, I got lucky, and it saved two of them, and they they grew to full length and everything. But one of them did die because of it. <clears throat> so. And all other things are made constant, so I'm fairly certain that that's what that was. So, without um, any more talking about it, uh, I'm going to uh, measure out about a gallon of this. Um, I don't think I'll need any more than that. Um, also, the measurements on the back of the bottle of this, this is my this hydroponic solution that I use. Uh, General Hydroponics. Um, <clears throat> I figured that if NASA uses it, why shouldn't I? So... I bought that, and I've had this for a long time. I've used it uh, in, mm, I've probably filled up probably 30 gallons and also watered my outdoor plants with them a few times. So it's, and I'm only down that much. So you can tell that um, <laughs> they, you know, they last forever if you don't have a huge uh, hydroponic system going. So, and they sell them in bigger jugs anyways. So, um <clears throat> yeah, thumbs up for that. Five stars. I love those. And my plants grow amazingly with it. Um, taste amazing. So, um, but this is not a review for that. I'm going to measure out one gallon of water and then I'm going to mix in um, the recommended amounts for those. And I'll show a video when I start to mix that in. Right, I'm back. <clears throat> I've had, uh, I had to add a little bit more water and uh, measure out or get the temperature back up to where it needed to be but um I was about three cups shy of a gallon so now I got a gallon of water here and um see what it says here on the back of the bottle it says if I can, there it goes um for cutlings and seedlings we need to do a fourth of a teaspoon per gallon of uh the flora grow the flora micro and the flora bloom so I'm gonna measure out a fourth of a teaspoon into the the water here so all right here we go i'm going to add the ingredients here per gallon we're doing one fourth teaspoon of these ingredients as directed by the label so i'm going to add one fourth teaspoon of the the flora grow right now and i'm going to stir that in before I add the next ingredient. Um, 
I can't remember if I saw that on form or if it's labeled here on the back of the bottle, but it says to mix them separately and don't combine the, the, um, it says do not combine the uh, ingredients, uh, then add them. So there must be a reason for that. Um, I don't quite understand the, the reasoning for that. Uh, I have some ideas, but it's easier just to follow the instructions. This is the cutling mix. Um, it, as you can see, it, I mean, it's still probably in the camera, still looks like water. It's got a slight pink uh, color to it. But um, this is what I'm going to use to feed the cutlings until they get their um, until they get their first real leaves, and then I'll switch them to the uh, the next general purpose mild vegetative. Let's see if we can get it on the camera here. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Yeah, general purpose mild vegetative, and it says to do one teaspoon one teaspoon and one teaspoon. All right, what I have here is a set of, I think it's a dozen uh, mason jars. Um, these are the 250 milliliter uh, jars and they have the uh, fruit, you know, cornucopia of fruits on the sides of it. And um, I picked these up at, um, you can pick them up anywhere really, but um, they were, they were like six bucks, seven bucks, something like that. They were less than ten dollars for all of them, and I've used a couple for another set that I'm starting. And um, but the reason I like these is because for one, they're very cheap. Two, I can keep them all separate. Now it doesn't really offer any protection from algae growth, but they won't be in here long enough to really worry too much about that. They the algae won't grow enough to com compete with the nutrients that are in there too much, and I'll periodically take them out and add more water um, just to keep the nutrients high um, and also to keep the algae growth down so but this is why I like this because of these net cups you can leave the lid on take the metal uh, seal it, seal off the inside and these net cups nestle down right inside that uh, it's a perfect fit so um, and those won't fall down in there or nothing so that's what I like about that the general hydroponics tends to be really well um, pH balanced, but um, I always make sure I always double check because I have before had it change. My water from the tap is actually really um, it's it's around a seven, so it's it's really it's really good with uh, general hydroponics. So so I bought this also from general hydroponics. It's a pH tester. Uh, let's see here, test indicator solution. And it came with, there we go, and it came with the pH up and pH down solutions and this stuff will last you forever at the rate I use it. Um, so if you just do small projects, this stuff will last you forever. So I just do enough to supply the household here. So I'm just going to fill this vial up about halfway as indicated by the instructions. There we go, it's about halfway. Now, I'm going to add three drops or so of this. Three. All right. I'm going to add the tip or the cap here. And I'm just going to give it a little shake, one shake. And as you can see, it's pretty yellow. So that may, that may be all right. So we're going to compare it here. And we're standing between a six and a six and a half. And according to the bottle you want to be between a 5.5 and a 6.5 and we are indeed between 5.5 and 6.5 we're between 6 and 5.5 so um, we're definitely above that so I would say uh, if not we're at 6 so um, either way we're at we have plenty of it it's plenty acidic so but not too acidic, so we're good on that. <clears throat> good to go there. We don't have to add any of the uh, pH up or down, and that's another reason why I'll never run out of the pH up or pH down that they've supplied with the indicator. And um, I may have a leak in this bowl. Oh well, we'll do it. We'll do it quickly. <laughs> um, 
that's what I get for buying a cheap bowl. Got all the water in the jars, and I'm gonna just show you about where I like the, the water to be at. Um, this is level with the, but let me show you these net cups. My net cups have a, uh, it's not on the met, it's, the lighting's kind of bad. There we go. All right, you can see here, they have a lip, little, um, little line across this cage here. And um, I fill it under that line to start them. All right, so big issue. The plants are actually way too, way too grown to go ahead and uh, use the plugs. So I'm gonna take the plugs out and put them back in their bag. They're still good to use on some more seeds. Um, I did let these go too far, but there's still hope. You can still plant your seeds. Um, in fact, I actually prefer this method anyways, because um, I'm not too happy with these plugs anyways. Um, not saying that I wouldn't recommend them because they work, they work pretty well uh, about 50% of the time. And uh, the plants that I have grown in them grow really well in them. And they stay pretty stable as well. So these actually offer a really good stable base. But as far as, it, as, far as using it with this method that I, that I use, uh, the better option are the expanded clay pebbles. And this is a set of, these are already washed. So I'm just going to put these in there. But this is from a previous um, setup I had going. And uh, these are all plants that I planted similarly to this. But I grew them in dirt first, and they grew, they outgrew their pots too fast, and I had extra hydroponic spot space, so I was like, why not try to move them over to the hydroponics, right? So I did, and they grew amazingly. Um, not as well as the ones I started hydroponically, but they also could have been uh, stunted because I left them in their um, original pots too long. But this is the, this is what I'm going to use now, and I'm going to show you what I do with that, so... Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the um, the seedlings. Now I'm going to pick out a couple of these little seedlings here. Some of the ones that are on the top here that I don't have to move every one of them to get to it. There we go. I had to move every one of them to get to that one anyways. But All right. Now I'm going to set this one here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. That may end up disastrous. Let's go ahead and try to find something that will lift it up a little bit higher for you. This is a leftover uh, li uh, solution that I'm going to save because evaporation later on when this evaporates, some of the water will evaporate. I'm going to add more in there. Um, well, there's a little, there's a little seedling hanging on there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see a little seedling hanging on. Some of these grow little fuzzy roots, and um, they grow little roots off off the roots, and they look kind of fuzzy when they're young does not want to focus on that what so there we go you can see it now okay all right so I'm gonna add this little root system be very careful not to break them um, and I'm gonna drop it down in there see this one this one I'm gonna go ahead and fill more up you can't really tell until you get I mean it's gonna be different for every one of them so I'm gonna add bunch more of these little pebbles here. This one's a little bit shorter than the other ones. so. And I'm going to kind of lay it down in there and drop the pebbles on top of it. And just kind of layer the pebbles in around it. And that, that's good because it supports the plant when it's growing. And then the uh, pebbles, of course, are not strong enough to keep, are not heavy enough to keep the um, to keep the plants from growing down into the the, the liquid or in the, into the solution. Let's get my let's get my pen here. Let's kind of prop it up. Right, let's use this end. I want a little bit more prop on this one. Yeah. I like, I like that. All right, now that one's gonna get some sun. It's gonna grow down, it's gonna grow up, and I got it down nestled down in there enough to where when it grows up, it's gonna be still supported, and the roots will get huge, and they'll grow all the way in those cracks, and they'll also support off of the, the net cup here. And um, yeah, we got a good little setup going here. 
the root actually doesn't touch in this situation, so I'm going to take it off and I'm going to add a little bit more water to this one. Um, but I'm going to do this to the rest of these, and some of them are going to need more uh, pebbles on top to begin with. Some of them are. It just depends on how long your roots are. Um, if they're long enough, they can go ahead and drop down into the water, um, and they don't have to add any more water to it because you don't want to drown the roots. That's a big thing. With this method that I use, I don't use a bubbler in my system. A lot of people swear by bubblers, and I'm sure it gives you better results, but I'm trying to go with as little, um, first off, noise, and also um, electricity used. I may eventually add a bubbler, um, but I've grown, I've grown one successful set of plants and to full height, like, um, I was growing a Bloomsdale stand, long-standing variety, and um, they're supposed to grow, reach heights of two foot, and my plants reached two, two and a half foot. They they grew or overgrew that average, so um, no issues with growth whatsoever. Roots were amazingly healthy, and um, I don't have any issues with that. The crack key method works, no bubbler, just air. So that's the key here, is that you need a level to where the roots can get oxygen and air. Just, just they can dry out and they don't get, um, they don't rot. So that is, that is utmost important. And, um, but like I said a second ago, I'm going to finish these up really fast because it's getting late. And um, I'll be back when it's done. And I'm going to show you um, some of my other plants and wrap up the video. So. All right, I'm back. And this is the end result. I have all the seedlings nestled up in, in that one, it's kind of hard to see them, but all of the seedlings are nestled up in those, um, those rocks, and I just filled up based off of what each root, how the far each root goes down, <clears throat> I based it to where I covered about half uh, of the root, maybe a little less. The roots just need to touch the water to be <clears throat> to be happy so and then they'll grow down into that water and pretty soon we'll be seeing some or I'll be seeing some roots growing down in the bottoms I kind of wish I didn't get these jars I didn't know that they were um, that they had all those designs on them because I, I do like the clear the the clean glass to you know you can see through them see the roots a little better on camera but um, that's all I have for this video um, I hope you found what I uh, posted useful to you. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask uh, in the comments below um, or send me a message. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these going for a couple weeks, and um, then I'm gonna come back to them, and they should be well and grown by then. So um, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, thanks.